Welcome back to another episode of Barbecue and Bottles. And today we're gonna to be searing two steaks and doing a comparison between a cast iron pan and a carbon steel pan. We just did a video that compared cast iron to stainless steel and that really took off. People really seemed to like that video. And the most requested video in the comments there was doing a comparison against carbon steel. So here we are. If you've got any other ideas, drop a comment in the comments below and you know, it might end up resulting in a video. So the main difference with a carbon steel pan versus say a cast iron is that it's just a lot lighter. Now they're both made with iron and carbon. It's just a slightly different composition. So this, it's much lighter. It's just like a stainless steel pan, but you get a lot of the heat retention and searing properties that are more commonly available in cast iron. Now the other thing with carbon steel is it's supposed to heat up more evenly than cast iron itself. So we'll see if that results in a more evenly done steak. More importantly, I'm just really interested if we can get the same kind of crust on a carbon steel pan as we do with traditional cast iron. So let's jump into this. So the first step is just gonna be lighting up the grill. Now we'll get both pans on here and we'll get these preheating inside the barbecue. Now we're just gonna prep some garlic here. Now you just wanna tap your chef's knife to crush or smash these garlics. It's just like we need you to smash the like button. It's free and it really supports your channel. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. And then it makes it easier to just get off the paper here, just like that. And now we'll cut off each of the ends and we're ready to add these into our pan. So now we've got our ingredients. We've got some rosemary, we've got some smashed or crushed garlic, and we've got some clarified butter. This clarified butter, it's really easy to make at home and it increases the smoke point of your regular butter from about 275 up to 480 degrees and that'll prevent it from burning when we put it on the cast iron or the carbon steel. So now just check out these steaks. I want you to come in here nice and close. We've got some beautiful grass-fed beef here. There's a little bit less marbling than grain-fed beef, but we love the extra beefiness that a cut like this really delivers. So we've gone to our butcher and we've had these cut about an inch and a quarter thick each. We did our typical 24 hour dry brine. So we added a generous amount of seasoning on these steaks, put them on a cooling rack, stuck them in the fridge over top of an aluminum baking sheet, and we just let them air dry in the fridge and that salt just absorbs all the way through the steak. And it's a beautiful way to get seasoning evenly throughout the entire cut. And this really allows for the surface of these steaks to be nice and dry. And when we transfer these steaks into the cast iron pan, all of the energy from the cast iron or the carbon steel is gonna go into the mired reaction, which will create a really beautiful brown, dark, rich crust. That that's what we're trying to accomplish here in addition to the flavor profile with the rest of this. So let's check out the temps. We'll see if our pans have warmed up. So we've just got our infrared temp gun here. So we're gonna check the temperatures of the pans. We're looking for between 450 and 500. So we've got that on the lodge. And over here on the carbon steel, we're just shy. We've got about four, what's that, 430. So I think we're ready to add the oil and then we'll get these steaks in. So we're using an avocado oil because this has a really high smoke point. It has a smoke point of, I think it's 520 Fahrenheit. So you don't have to worry about this going rancid or, or burning or smoking while you're, you're cooking. Now we're just gonna move those pans around, make sure we get a nice even coating all around the pan, just like that. And now we're gonna go in with the steaks. Now first, we're just gonna sear the fat cap of the steak. Now the reason that we're doing this at the start as opposed to the end is when we remove the steak because it's hit its desired internal temperature, we don't wanna then have to sear off the fat cap and have additional heat applied to the steak. So that's why we're gonna sear off the fat cap right at the start. Now that we've seared the fat caps off here for about 60 seconds, now just lay it down on one side. 
Now we'll close down the lid and let those sear away. Now we're gonna let these steaks go for about four minutes on this side and you're not gonna wanna flip it at all. You want all of that energy forming a beautiful crust. And when you take your tongs, if you feel any resistance as you go to flip your steak at the four minute mark, just let it go a little bit longer. There shouldn't be any resistance. When it releases from the pan cleanly, that's when you know it's ready to turn. All right, now it's time to turn these steaks. So again, we've got the full release here. And I don't know about that crust. We'll see if we can fix that. And then this steak, nice turn. All right. Now we're just gonna add in our clarified butter. Now we're gonna add in our garlic. And then we're gonna ruffle up a few sprigs of rosemary. All right, now we're just gonna tilt your pan and then baste these steaks. All right, now we've just moved the garlic and the rosemary up onto the steak. It's got a nice brown color to it. And now we just want to leave it up there so that it doesn't actually burn. Now we're going to close the lid down and let these steaks sear away for probably another two or three minutes until we hit an internal temperature of 128 Fahrenheit. So we just hit an internal temp of 128 on this steak. So we're going to take it off and move it to the cutting board. So now we'll check the temp on the final steak. There, an internal of 126. There'll be a little bit of carryover, so let's get this off and on to the cutting board. So now we're just gonna let these guys rest for 10 minutes and that'll allow the juices to just redistribute through the steak. So when we slice into it, we just don't get all that juice and renderings that we've worked so hard to develop here spilling out over our cutting board. All right, these have been resting here for 10 minutes now. And just look at this rosemary. I wanna point this out to you. We used a decent amount of clarified butter and it almost comes out like it's fried and it is a wonderful crispy texture and adds a wonderful flavor profile. So now we're gonna remove our garlic and our rosemary from our two steaks here. And we're gonna slice in and see how these turned out. Now again, we we're aiming for a nice medium rare and we did these through to what we're hoping was an internal, final internal temperature of 128. So as you can see here, we kind of did medium to medium well on this steak. That's certainly one of the features of the carbon steel pan here is that this actually cooks it a lot quicker. And this was a marginally thinner steak. So that's one benefit if you're cooking in a kitchen and you need to crush things out really quickly, then carbon steel pans are probably gonna be searing your steaks faster. All right, you can see here, we've got some gray around the edge, but it is a nice medium rare on the inside here. Now we seared off both of the fat caps. We've got a decent crust on each of these steaks. And now there's really only one thing left to do, and that is to go in for the taste test. So I'm gonna take a piece that's got a bit of the fat cap Mmm. Oh my gosh, that is incredible. Mmm. That fat cap is so buttery soft. You get the hints of the garlic and the rosemary. A really nice beefy flavor from that grass-fed beef. Absolutely wonderful. Nice rich butteriness from that clarified butter as well. I'm going in for another piece of this. And now the taste test for the cast iron. Mmm. This is so good. I'm gonna pair it with a garlic clove here. Now that was absolutely a wonderful cook. Here, the end result, we probably overdid these steaks a little bit more than our personal preference, which is medium rare, but I'm actually gonna give the winner here to the carbon steel. Now the reason is we got the same crust, we got a faster cook, and it's much lighter than cast iron, and it's got the same durability that cast iron does as well. 
So that's it. If you like this experiment, consider subscribing to the channel. We've done over 20 of these steak experiments and we've got a link here to the playlist where you can go through all of them where we test different preparation methods, different pans against one another. And we're really on this journey to searing the perfect steak. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.